Um, I just want to say a really big good morning to Dakota Gorman, who I've been trying to talk to for a long time after a movie impressed me so much that she made all about sex. It's also called Natural Disasters, but we'll talk about that as well. Uh, good morning from Australia, Dakota. Good morning from New York. <laughs> uh, what's your middle name? I see that there's a Dakota S. Gorman in some of your credits. Oh, you're going to love this. My middle name is Shane. Well, <laughs> I didn't even know that. Amazing. Is it spelt the same way? No, mine has a Y in it, but oh, wow. other than that, yeah. Very cool. Uh, the 2022 Emmy Awards were just uh, a, like they were read out this morning. Um, are any of your friends or colleagues up for any awards or nominations that you know of? You know what? This is so bad. I didn't even know that that happened. So I'm <laughs> assuming not because I would have heard from someone. Oh, here, here, here I thought uh, I wasn't going to get you on the spot in this interview, but I did. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have no, you ever, good. Have you ever been down under, ever been to Australia for any, any filming reasons or visiting for a holiday? No, I haven't. I almost went once because uh, I had a friend filming something out in Australia and then I had to cancel last minute because I booked a spot on Teen Wolf. So I didn't end up going. Yeah. But I do have some friends that are from Australia and I, I'm just like, how do people survive out there <laughs> between all the poisonous things that exist and like this crazy size hail that I hear about? But yeah, yeah, it's true when they say hail is as big as golf balls. I've seen it bigger. <laughs> oh my gosh yeah that's terrifying so one day i'll go but i i'm a little intimidated by australia honestly no i get that uh how did your movie all about sex go from uh like an idea to a script and to the finished project that everybody saw that was it a long process um in in some ways yes but i i really think comparatively to how long it takes a film to get made usually no um I was still at the point in my career where I was really finding my voice and what I wanted to write it was kind of that junction of do I start taking things that are available to me to build credits and like get financial traction in the industry I want to be in or do I focus on really things that I want to make even if you know they're not appealing to everyone out of the gate right now or like seen as marketable but I just can't invest time into something I'm not super passionate about. And so I, that's how it started for me. And it was this specific project, like mainly an outlet for a lot of like personal stuff I was going through and some mental health struggles. And I just was dealing with a lot of shame at that point in my life. And so I wanted to make a movie that showed, hey, life is really rough. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to make an ass of yourself. Things are not going to turn out how you want. Yeah. But you can still have a good attitude about it and not let it define you. So that was the driving force for me behind this. That's that's a really huge thing to do, to take your own personal inner things such as mental health and put it on a page and then act it out as such, even though it's fiction. I'm sure you had some uh, real elements in there about your, your life. Yeah, definitely. Um, a lot of it was inspired by me and, and kind of how I like to explain it is all the characters are fictional, but based on real pieces of my own life and yeah. different aspects of my personality. I feel like I've struggled a lot with feeling like I have to define myself. And if I'm one thing, I can't be another. And uh, I really feel like I wanted to capture that with Emma's character, Morgan, of just having this side profession that has such a bias against it but when you don't know that about her she's just like a normal silly goofy person <laughs> and so I really wanted to merge that for her because uh, I'm big support on just like people have complex personalities and you shouldn't be able to categorize yourself so easily yeah yeah well We'll get to her because Emma Decker's uh, is a revelation in this movie. Uh, she really stands out, but I'll, I'll bring her up shortly because she has some good cast members. Uh, did you stay in character? You're, you're a star, you're the writer, director. Did you stay in character when the camera stopped rolling or was it just Dakota back to normal? <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like I couldn't stay in character because Your character I was, was very uh, yeah, evolving <laughs> at times. <laughs> yeah, I, um, 
you know, I wasn't even supposed to act in it. We had someone else cast in the role and oh, really? uh, yeah, they ended up not being able to do it about two weeks before we went into production and um, you know, the producers on it and my friends were like, you're an idiot if you don't just do this, like you're an actor. And yeah. I really got in my head about like, well, I don't have like established big credits yet. And what if I can't hold this? And everyone was like, this is you, like you're frustrated by your life. Like that is this character. And so I kind of just didn't have the time to overthink it because we were also in pre-production and oh, okay. uh, luckily I had, yeah, a, a team that really supported it. And I just, you know, I knew what this person was feeling from my take on it and how I wanted them to exist between the other two characters, which is really like someone who's muted their enthusiasm in life because they don't want to disappoint themselves. Sure. Um, so I just kind of leaned into that and then, you know, when we'd cut, I'd hop behind the camera, get everything I needed and then would hop back in front <laughs> and just release it to the universe. Uh, was it your suggestion to change the title? Because uh, in Australia and in UK, it was released as all about sex and other parts of the world, but Natural Disasters, it's the name on IMDb and, and other places when you're looking it up. Uh, how did that come about? What happened? Yeah, I mean whatever i i'm just going to be very honest it was definitely not my idea to change the title right um yeah I, for me the original title it came from um a poem by rupi kaur and it your body is a museum of natural disasters can you grasp how stunning that is which kind of wow. fits into that idea of shame that i was talking about of mm. being messy and still beautiful and you know, I understand kind of where our distributors were coming from uh, in wanting to appeal to a certain type of audience. But for me, I had a lot of resistance to the title just because I was like, it kind of diminishes what <laughs> the film is actually about mm. a little. And I I'm really hoping we can get past the point of females being open about sex being then the driving force of what that narrative is or being provocative because it's like the new Sex in the City. And I love Sex in the City. It has a special place in my heart, but that's sure. not what I was trying to make with this. So I feel like it was a little mismarketed, but at the same time, I'm just grateful for the opportunity. We got to get it out there. And it's, it's interesting to see how different people perceived it in different ways. And that's kind of how I feel about the title. It's like, it just read totally different for the group of people who selected it. Yeah, it sounds more like a, a 90s or an 80s sex comedy, and it's anything but. I mean, it has that in it, and it's referenced, and things happen in a great, loving way at times, but it's more reality bites, if you ask me. It's friendship. It's so funny you say that, because that is the one comparison that comes up a lot, and that is, like, definitely my kind of humour. I like that really, like, dry, fly-on-a-wall kind of just it's awkward because it's how things actually happen and it's not glamorized or sexy and and so I hope to lean into that more as I continue to make more things. Uh, was the locations uh, authentic locations were they friends houses was the swimming pool yours? <laughs> oh absolutely oh my gosh everything <laughs> was like what can we get as a favor so most of the bars you see are bars that I've worked at that I had oh, wow. relationships with and um, a lot of the like interiors were the same places repurposed as different places um, so we were very fortunate to be able to do that <laughs> and oh god I'm laughing because there was like one location <laughs> where like two days before shooting the person whose house it was was like um we have an issue uh someone like broke into our house and drank all our alcohol and like puked all over <laughs> and like just really? destroyed yeah. everything yeah and we were like oh my god and they're like yeah they like made a bunch of sandwiches and put the sandwiches in our side tables and i was like what so we had to like go in and clean all that up like the day before shooting and just yeah. Um, yeah, and the pool was completely impromptu. We were supposed to film somewhere else and weren't able to. And, and then someone on the fly on set was like, we can use my pool. So that's where we went. Well, the pool works. That's a really cool thing because you're jumping the fence. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's one of my favorite moments in the movie for sure. And like, actually 
that scene was written very differently in the script. And because of the time and, and what changed in the story, we wrote everything um, on the fly and just decided like, this is the conversation we're gonna have and like, let's just wing it and do it. And we only had a couple takes, so Good I'm glad work. it worked out. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, there was some graffiti I noticed. Uh, Eddie Murphy can act. Was that just there or did you write it? Because I totally agree. <laughs> um, we wrote all of the graffiti on that oh. dumpster. Yeah, it's it's all stuff that I think those details matter. And I wanted to show like the random things you pass in life that you don't always notice, but like that came from somewhere and it just added to the humor, I think, if for the people who picked up on it. <laughs> uh, off the cuff, uh, favorite Eddie Murphy movie? Oh my gosh, I haven't seen an Eddie Murphy movie in so long. My brain immediately just goes to Dr. Doolittle, but I feel like I was like eight when I watched that. Uh, definitely Beverly Hills Cop for me, I'd say. Okay, all right. Yeah, I gotta I gotta revisit Eddie Murphy. I God, yeah, what a nostalgic name at this point for me. And before I ask you about your great cast, uh, there's a lovely cat in the background. What's your cat's name? Um, yes, this cat's name is Maybe, off of Arrested Development. Ah, okay. And then I have another one named Ruxin, off of The League. Oh, wow, that's uh, perfectly named by the look of it, by that one anyway, Thank you. Yeah, she's a gem. Uh, how did you get ca your casting done so perfectly, uh, starting with Emma, Emma Deckers, because uh, that character is terrific um, and you all have great chemistry but Emma in particular and I spoke to Emma when the movie came out and she was just so uh, happy that she was part of the project spoke highly of you um, yeah did, did you just know that she was going to be the one well I actually met Emma before we started the casting process and I just we hit it off I wanted us to make something together she yes. was looking for material that she really gravitated to and uh, she read the script and I was like, if any of these characters appeal to you, let me know because we're in the process of trying to get this financed and I'd love for you to be a part of it. And she gravitated to Morgan's character the most. And when we did the table read, there was just something like I love that she didn't lean into the sexuality of that character, which is exactly mm -hmm. what I wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so for me, it was kind of just like, I loved how the flow went. I love Emma. So that wasn't even much of a thought process there. And Natalie? Natalie uh, is actually kind of a crazier story. She auditioned for another movie that I wrote called Aftermath. Yeah. And I remember, yeah, seeing her audition tape. And at that point, I knew that Aftermath had locked in their casting. And, you know, Natalie wasn't part of that. So I had our team reach out to her reps just because she's stuck in my mind and so we did and she ended up this was like the day before her character was supposed to start shooting she got the script then and then showed up to set the next day so <laughs> another perfect choice uh the um male characters kind of take a step back in this film um obviously might probably intentional but was there any casting there that you are most impressed with or just in general, they were all doing exactly what you want the, wanted them to do. Yeah, I, I just feel like we found the the right people. And uh, yeah. it was, we met a lot of great people. And like with Dylan specifically, like there were some awesome actors that I came across. And at one point I was like, oh, this is our guy. And then Dylan came in and I was like, crap, this is our guy. And like, it's so hard. Cause it's just like, sometimes it's not even about like, what they bring to the character it's just they have that essence yeah. and i knew because a lot of this was going to be very quick uh minimal takes a lot of improv i really tried to for all the characters lean into people who i thought just embodied those people to a certain extent so when we went off book it was just like in them a dozen there's not so many of them anymore but there was a, a movement a film movement the mumblecore movement for quite some time yeah. and um i wrote in my review that this is a, a millennial mumblecore romantic endeavor would you agree oh my gosh i am so happy you said that yeah because the mumblecore genre is a huge influence to me and the style i like to make and you know everything from like 
Baghead and like early Greta Gerwig stuff. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. it's just, and that is the ultimate goal is if you can take that mumblecore, for me anyways, take those mumblecore elements and kind of put them in a little bit of a more um, accelerated structure. So you have like the best of both worlds. And I don't know how that looks yet, but that was the attempt with this anyway of it not being so slice of life mumblecore, but still leaning into that. Yeah, definitely leaning into that. And to praise you even more, and I'll stop because I'll ask another question after this. <laughs> I said about you, uh, where is it? Autor Gorman has impressible range to ignite given or creating bigger projects. Uh, think Greta Gerwig. So I actually quoted, oh said God. that about you. <laughs> Um, Thank yeah, you I, so much. If, if you're given the opportunity to do bigger projects, you're going to be along the greater lines, I think, just because of your style. Even Aftermath has, it's only you writing it. It's a totally different movie, but it has your signature in it. So um, I just want to praise you, you, tell you how great you, I think you are. I really genuinely appreciate that. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm always impressed when I watch movies about writing and acting and, and different things, but writing is one of the most uh, in particular parts I critique. So well done so far. Anyway. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, not going wood. Uh, what's your opinion on the film industry as general? I know we uh, had a big break there with the COVID situation, things being delayed and projects on hold and people losing jobs. Did it affect you? Um, do you think it's back on track now? Um, I'm not sure. I think it definitely halted things in the process and inflated a lot of budgets because of all the COVID officers mm -hmm. you had to put on set now and, and just the insurance for in case people got COVID on set. So for my team, which is, you know, indie filmmakers trying to work their <laughs> way up, it definitely affected us. And it came right at when we were <laughs> trying to get distribution for this movie. But I don't want to say it necessarily hurt the distribution for this particular one, because I think people were looking for stuff to watch and things weren't being made. So maybe it worked in our favor. Um, but I do think things are starting to get back on track as far as executing projects. Good. Yeah, no, that's good. Definitely the movies are starting to roll through, not just the blockbusters, but some of those uh, lower mid mid budget ones that are so effective, especially at the end of the year when Oscars yes. start getting spoken about. <laughs> yes, definitely. And that's, you know, see. where my heart lives are those smaller movies. And I just think they, they are able to take a lot more artistic liberties because there isn't so much financially on the line. So with you personally, are there still um, quality indie projects and, and commercial projects? Um, do they balance out opportunities for you or, or not as much? Oh, Definitely. Um, it's, you know, it's hard to speak in it in relation to my own career, just because with the writing and directing stuff, I kind of set up the projects I wanted to work on next, which is what I've been so immersed in right now. So yeah. I'm not really looking at anything outside of what I'm creating, because I'm so excited about the content that I'm on board with. Um, and you know still still auditioning for other things i did an episode of uh how i met your father in the fall and it was great to be around that cast they were so so nice and amazing and just being on a sitcom which is very different from what i do on the creation yeah. side it was it so that was great um but yeah i think there's like my favorite film i saw this year was i always say it wrong but i think it's titan or titan oh, yeah titan <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I always like, say titan and i don't know <laughs> yeah i say titan and everyone's like it's titan and then i say titan and there it's titan i don't know yeah. but it that was just i'm really loving films that the writing is there but it's so visual and there's so much communication going on in between the lines and that's really inspiring to me that's a whole different um conversation in itself we could talk about titan for <laughs> Half an hour is so good. It was in my top 10 movies of last year. I, I really liked it a lot, but not a lot of people saw it, unfortunately. And I understand because of the subject matter, but it took incredible risks. And the name escapes me, but that, that lead actress, the lead actor in that, she was yes. 
very, oh my very, gosh. very good. Phenomenal. Yeah. And I, I love, you know, my favorite movies are the ones that I leave the theater and I'm like, I can't stop thinking about this. And I'm like writing down shot ideas or, you know, music I liked. And that film was just firing on all cylinders for me. But like you said, we could talk forever. So I'm going to shut up about it. <laughs> uh, what, what about if you could write a role for yourself uh, and it was immediately financed, any movie? And would you rather play a villain or a hero? I want to say I lean villain, mm. but I love those like mixed where it's like the anti-hero if it's going to be a hero. And I, I think I say all that. I know I say all that because I tend to come off as very introverted at times and chill. And so a lot of my audition career has been like the meek person or like the traumatized daughter. And I... <laughs> love things where I can like step in and own my space and own a personality that I don't really utilize in my day-to-day -day life. For me, that's, it's so much more active. So that's why I say all that. Um, was Teen Wolf one of your most uh, passionate and favorite projects or, or was there other things that you've done that um, equal that or surpass that? Something that you always go back and think, what a wonderful experience that was? Because Teen Wolf obviously is probably one of the ones people recognize you for maybe. Yeah, I um, I don't know. I kind of loved them all that I worked on because I just got very lucky with the things I've been cast in where I genuinely had fun on all the sets. The mm. Teen Wolf was particularly fun just because I love things that are very physical and I got to be dragged around in a body bag and like <laughs> screaming. So like, and I, I love horror movies. So for yeah. me, that, that fits into that. But I, I don't think... I favor anything I've filmed one or the other. It's different and ex and amazing in their own ways. Are we going to see a Dakota uh, horror film in the near future, potentially? I hope so. It's, it's a genre I'm leaning into after this. So I'm hoping to take elements of what you've seen of mine so far and really uh, create something new uh or at least something that there's not enough of in the horror space i think uh because it's just for me an untapped genre like if there was great character development in horror films <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> i'm uh, i'm interviewing jason blum from blumhouse in a couple of weeks because the black phone is getting released in australia so uh, i'll <laughs> drop your name how's that <laughs> oh my gosh yeah that would be great uh yeah, no, horror films live in my blood. So I'm very excited to be focusing on that um, more moving forward. Have you got a dream scene partner or an actor that you always wanted to work with, but you haven't yet? Someone that, I know there's probably many. Yeah, there's so many. I will say just off the top of my head, Sam Rockwell's just my go-to favorite actor. I love him. If I could ever be in anything with him, that would be the dream. And also Issa Rae, I love what she creates and I love how it just feels like she has fun on set. And that I think is also a huge component in acting is not just the material and whether you gravitate to that, but like what is the actual vibe of being on set? And I just <laughs> think, I don't, I can't even imagine how fun it would be. So those would be my go-to answers right now. Uh, you've done a lot of uh, successful modeling. Uh, as well as acting, um, what came first? Was it modeling and then did you go in, fall into acting or was it always something you, you've done both of? No, the modeling actually uh, just came off of after All About Sex released uh, and we were doing press for that. So these were, aside from headshots, my first editorial shoots. Is that uh, right? And <laughs> yeah, no, I did not know what I was doing, but I, I had the best time and I did not think I would because I hate taking headshots and I hate having my photo taken, but yeah. it's just, especially like um, the, the pieces I did with, with boys Bieber, um, he, the outfits were so specific and bizarre and it was like stepping into this kind of alternate universe and I just leaned into that and I it was so memorable so that kind of sparked me wanting to be like how do I do more of this so it's something I'm looking into but but haven't figured it out because it's like not a realm I'm used to working in. 
Yeah, it must be difficult um, at times to uh, model if you weren't up like used to it. I mean, it's totally different to acting, although it's that same realm, but I hear it is just totally different and actually harder at times. It is it is challenging, definitely. And it's it's interesting to see, like, it's really not about like posing and looking good. Like you kind of have to get in your head and think like, okay, what am I in this moment? And how do I like portray that through my body and just trust whatever I'm doing? And so it's 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 very playful if you lean into it. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm really glad the Me Too movement has really changed things in our industry and time's up. Uh, along the way, have you ever had any hiccups or hurdles that crossed your path that, you know, you didn't, didn't want to deal with or has it all been very smooth sailing for you? Um, I definitely wouldn't say it's smooth sailing. I am fortunate in that I don't know if it's like how I was raised or just the environment I've been around where I've steered clear of a lot of pressure, but there's definitely been moments where people don't take no for an answer. And right. you, it's, it's tough because on one hand, you're like, I wanna be firm and set this boundary and stick up for myself. And on the other hand, I think there's still like, well, I'm nobody compared to this somebody and are they gonna go around and ruin everything? And, and it yeah. sucks that, that is still a thing that's out there and it's it's just not it's not right for anyone whatever it's gender shocking. we're talking about yeah. yeah it's shocking it's still a thing and i'm really glad that things have changed but yeah it's unfortunately still out there on a brighter yeah. note before we wrap up uh, <laughs> uh can you surf um i don't know anymore but i used to be able to surf in middle school that was my surf phase can you sing would you be in a musical I would be open to a musical I used to work at a karaoke bar so I would sing every single week I have an okay <laughs> voice but I'm not trained by any means what was your go-to song um when we did live band karaoke it was mother by Danzig so that that was a good one and then white rabbit by Jefferson Airplane oh brilliant brilliant always makes me think of the matrix that, yeah. That <laughs> uh, was there anything on your SAG card when you first got, got it that you lied about that you couldn't do, but you just put it on there anyway? I were don't think so. Were you honest? Because <laughs> some people are not I honest. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was because I, yeah, I, the SAG card, because I was acting when I was little, by the time I did like my first commercial at 17, it was like, oh, I have a SAG card and now owe $3,000. Fair enough. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and what's next? What's next up for you? Anything that you can discuss or tell me about? Yeah, definitely. Um, one of the things that is taking the most attention of mine right now um, is a project I'm collaborating on with this company called Myth Division who just started a, a production side of their company, but they do comic books mainly. So uh, without giving too many details, cause it's under wraps right now, I'm writing a story that will basically be the origin story for one of their comics and does have like some horror elements to it. So Ooh. yeah. Uh, a Very movie nice. or a series? It will be a movie and then I'm not sure if it will branch off into other movies, but there will definitely be a comic book series off of it. Well, that's really good to hear. And I think that I love, as much as I love the quality television series that are, that are on, like Westworld, I'm watching at the moment, it, at the new season, and it is just brilliant. You could put it on at the cinema, but movies are always my thing. So yeah, keep making yeah. movies, Dakota. <laughs> okay, I will, that's the goal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much for joining me. I'll just press stop and we're done. There you go. Oh my gosh, that was so fun. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much as well. I um, 